Hello and welcome to this InPrint 3 Getting Started video. We're starting on the home page of InPrint 3, which as you can see has a number of template folders. Now InPrint 3 is a desktop publishing program, but we do have a number of templates that you can use as starting points. Once in one of these templates, you can actually amend and adjust them as much as you like by adding rows and columns, merging cells, etc., all of which we'll have a look at. If you have time, it is always worth having a look through the different template folders because it will show you the starting point for many different resources and projects. For example, in the sentence construction folder, sort of AKA colorful semantics, you can see that templates have already been made for you to populate with your vocabulary. Uh, just navigating back home using the up arrow in the vocabulary folder. Again, you've got different templates that you can use as starting points. The word walls are really nice. The synonyms are really nice. But I'm just going to show you a very basic flashcard so that we can have a look at some of the features. So it's a double click to get into a template. <clears throat> sorry, into a folder, and then a double click to get into one of those templates. So just starting by using a three by two landscape flashcard. Once that uh, has uh, loaded, you will see that your cells are there and they are all pre-formatted. That means that the cell is as the font and the text and the symbols within the cell are as big as they possibly can be. So if I were type to type the word cat, my symbol appears automatically and the font size and the symbol size are filling that cell. Tabbing into the next cell, and that's the easiest way to move around. I can type in another word, for example, dog, and the symbol again will appear automatically. Now, you can see on the right hand side that you have options. So if I want a dog in the basket, I can just left click and that will replace. If I wanted a wild dog, again, left click and that will replace the existing symbol. Tabbing into the next cell, typing in another word. Now we said suggest you tab rather than um, press the space bar or press return because it moves you into the next cell. If you do press return, which is a natural thing to do, the expectation is that you're going to put more symbols and more text into your cell. And so everything will become smaller to allow you to type the next word. If that's a mistake, then you can just press backspace on the keyboard and it will return you to where you were. So again, just going to put a few uh, different words in uh, so that we can have a look at some of the different features that are also available in Imprint 3. Now, Imprint 3 is arranged on a ribbon basis, so very similar to Word. We're currently in the formatting ribbon and you can see the different features. And if I hover over any of those functions or icons, you can see what they actually do. So the first one I'm going to look at by placing my cursor in the cell is change symbol text. And what that does is leave the symbol gets rid of the text, allowing me to type in whatever I want to. So my cat is called Vanilla. So I can rename the cat symbol with the name of my cat, and that makes it more personal and more usable in certain situations. Any changes I make are remembered while I am in this session. If I want the um, in print three to remember those changes for future sessions, then I need to save those. And we'll have a little look at how to do that in a moment. Moving on to the next cell, 
Um, just got a very generic symbol here for a dog. You have over 20,000 symbols. And within the database, you can actually search. So I'm going to search for a different breed of dog, a collie perhaps. And you can see that then appears in my symbol chooser. I can left click, keeping my finger down on the mouse, I can pick that up and just drop it over the gray box in the symbol that I want it to be. So I can have different breeds of dogs if I want to. Moving on to another feature on the formatting ribbon. This is to do with skin tone. So any symbol that has flesh or skin, we're actually able to change the skin tone. So clicking on the skin tone icon, you can see the different options. So again, this means that we can be um, specific for individuals, making the symbols more relevant. You'll see with symbols where there is more than one person that the skin tones are varied and this makes the software and the symbol set inclusive. If you don't want varied skin tone, again, the skin tone icon allows you to turn off the default varied skin tone and choose the one that you want. I'm going to put the varied one back on. And as I say, that is the default, but it can be altered. Having a look at the word sit, again, you have your different options on the right hand side. I'm going to choose sitting on the carpet as opposed to um, sitting in a car seat or a train seat or an airplane seat. And show you that once more, you can personalize this. So I'm not aware of any school uniform where we have a mustard jumper and a blue trousers. So I'm going to change this to reflect the school uniform of my children's school. And to do that on the formatting ribbon, I'm going to click on the artist's palette. That brings up a dialog box. If I click on the mustard, I can change that to uh, royal blue. I'm going to click on the blue trousers to change those to grey. And I'm going to click on the brown shoes to change those to black. And OK. And that now is more representative of the children in my school. And once again, we can save that change for future use. But I want to make a few more changes before we have a look at that. So here is Mrs. Grayson. Now we have a symbol for Mrs. We don't have a symbol for Grayson, her name. And I'm not keen on the layout of this. I would prefer to have the symbol over the whole of Mrs. Grayson's name. To do that, I can highlight the name or indeed any phrase and right click on the symbol to set this symbol for selected text. And what that does is basically centralize the symbol and mean that that symbol represents the whole of that name or the whole of that phrase, however you have used it. Now, as I mentioned, the symbol set is um, over 20,000. So you have symbols for uh, the majority of vocabulary and scenarios. But there are times when it's really useful to use a photograph. And that's particularly when you're talking about specific people or perhaps specific places that you might be visiting. To add a photograph to Imprint 3 is very easy. On the right hand side at the bottom, you have your image library. Now, pictures is linked to my pictures on the desktop. You can also get directly to the desktop or to your computer and your network drives. How you use the photographs wherever you find them is exactly the same. So I'm going into pictures and saved pictures, which is uh, where my pictures are. And I'm going to find a photograph of Mrs. Grayson. So again, I can left click, sits on my cursor, and I can drop that where I want it to be, where the box goes grey. And I've automatically then got a photograph. Uh, navigating back to home, just a little house icon on the image library.
So those are some basic features and those are some changes that we have made to the symbol. So we now need to save those changes. And that's done through the symbols ribbon. So symbols, save symbol changes. So here are all the changes that I have made. And I want those to go into my user word list, which is my generic word list. So I click on user word list. I can select add all and OK, or I could just choose one of them and add and OK. And that will save all of those changes for future use in my user word list. We'll come back to um, the symbols ribbon in a moment. Just want to show you on the widget website. So widget website, www.widget.com. We are a IT company, computer software, so widget with an IT. The support section and imprint three. So as well as this video, you've also got help sheets. And these are downloadable PDFs that show you the basic functions of Imprint 3 and then some projects that you can undertake to learn more about the more advanced features. So we've had a look already at changing the color of a symbol, changing the text below the symbol, adding images to words. So we've added a photograph and here save word list changes. So you can always go through it step by step using the downloadable PDFs. Going back to InPrint 3, we've now completed this first page of our resource, but I want to add some more pages to this resource. And that's done through my Pages ribbon, where I can add a single page either before or after my existing one. And that will add a page that is the same original template. So there's my first one, there's my second one. Just uh, get that back into, um, so you can see it on the screen. As well, you can add multiple pages. Now that's done through Manage Pages. That opens up a pop up and you can see that I've got my original and my new one. Now I can add pages and this will add more pages, however many I want before or after of the original blank template. If I want to duplicate something, so copy something that I've already done, and that might be because I want to copy the symbols or it might be that I want to copy the layout when I've in change the layout, then I can duplicate. So duplicate, let's have a couple of those and OK. So that's duplicated what was already there. Now, the other really good thing about Manage Pages is that I can pick up and move my pages into a different order. So if you create um, a little bit randomly, that's really useful because you can move things around to wherever you want them. Also on the pages ribbon, you have margins, orientation, paper size, and the ability to add headers and footers. And we'll talk more about headers and footers when we uh, go into designing something from scratch. I'm just going to close that for now. And I'm going to close the page manager down so that you can see more easily. So here we got some new pages. So let's have a look then at how we can alter the layout. From the cells ribbon, I can alter the look of my individual cells in terms of color, border color, the content of the cell. So let's have put a few more in. So some visual timetable um, symbols. If I want text only, then 
with my cursor in the cell, I can go to text only on the cells ribbon. If I want symbols only, I can go to symbols only on that ribbon. And obviously I've got uh, symbol and text. We can change the background color. Again, the cells ribbon, background, so we can change the background color of a cell. I can change the line color and the line thickness and what my corner radius looks like and whether I have a shadow or otherwise. So lots of ways I can alter the layout in terms of the content and the, um, the colors. Now, you may or may not have noticed, but around the outside of my cells, I have a dotted line. And this dotted line means I'm working at cell level. So if I click in a cell and I change the background color, it just changes it on that one particular cell. Now, I might want to change the background color of all my cells. So essentially, I want to work at table level. And I can do that by right clicking, select table. Now, you will see that the solid, the dotted line has gone solid. That means I'm working at table level and my um, I've got the cursor on my mouse that so I can move around, but the cursor that was in the cell has disappeared because I'm talking about all of the cells. So if I want to change the background color now of all of those, I can do that in one go. So solid line is table level, dotted line is cell level. So that's looking at how you can use the cells ribbon to alter uh, some of the layout. Let's now move on to look at the table layout ribbon, which is where you can add your rows and columns and merge cells. So similar icons to Word. So if I want to insert a column, then I've got my cursor in the cell, insert column, insert to the left, and then I just need to um, drag that into within my margins. I can do a similar thing with insert row. And again, just drag that to fit. So very easy to create extra rows and columns. If I want to merge cells, so maybe I want to do a visual timetable and I want to put break all the way across or I want to put a title on my resource. Then clicking in the cell with a shift and a left click in each of the cells I want to merge. And then on my table layout ribbon, merge cells. And that gives me one big cell for my title. I can also split cells. So again, with my cursor in the ribbon, sorry, my cursor in the cell, I'm going to uh, split that one horizontally. So it gives me a different layout and I can design then the resources that I want to. Gaps between these might be perceived as being too big. So with table spacing, I can actually reduce the size of those to the size that I want. And then I can just drag to make that A4 again. So you can see the versatility that you have within Imprint 3 and the flexibility for creating um, bespoke resources. Moving on to um, restricted symbols. So our symbol, symbol set uh, within the standard database over 20,000, but we also have in the symbols ribbon, in symbol settings and more options, our restricted symbol set. So these are specific and explicit symbols. 
if you're needing to teach uh, PSHE or sex education, for example. So I can choose those. They're defaulted off. I can make them defaulted on if I want to, or I can just click them on and off whenever I need to use them and click OK. So I will give you some examples so that you can see the difference. And I apologize if anybody's having a, a snack. Uh, this is the symbol in the standard database. These are the symbols in the restricted set. So you can see they are more explicit. And sometimes you need that if you're writing social stories to explain toileting, for example. Um, for your RSE, your sex ed, um, you might need something again that's more explicit. And these symbols are not in the standard database. They're only in that restricted symbol set. I'm going to um, remove those because we don't want to be looking at those for the rest of the session. Uh, but just to remind you, they are in the symbols ribbon, symbol settings, more options. I'm just going to turn mine off again. But that's where I say you will find them. OK. Once you've completed your resource, you'll want to save it. And that's done through the file ribbon. You can, um, bottom right, you can print directly. You can export as a PDF directly. And then top left, you can save. So we can save as a document. Or if we've created a new blank template with different colors, different layouts, etc., can save that as a template for further use as well. But save this document takes you into your computer and you can save it wherever you want to. To get back into it, to re-edit, then we go to the formatting ribbon again. So I'm now back in to edit this one again. So let's add some other images. So we've looked at photographs. Now I want to look at how you can add images from the internet. So from Google Images, and from the thumbnails, so here, not the adverts, they don't work, but from the thumbnails, you don't need to go into the actual image. You can just use these. Right click. Copy image, we go back into imprint three, and then on my formatting ribbon, top left, I have the paste icon, and that shows me that my internet image is sat on my cursor and I can drop it into a cell. Now, if you require a word to go with that image, you do need to type it in first. It may or may not have a symbol, but you need to type that word in first, then go to paste, still on my uh, cursor, and I can then drop that in, and that's then replace the symbol with that image. Again, that can be saved on the uh, symbols ribbon, save some changes. We also have uh, something called widget media. Now, this is in your image library. And Widget Media is a form of clip art, if you like. It's slightly more complex than a symbol, but nowhere near as complicated as a photograph or um, any other type of visual. And these are really useful for just giving a bit more information. So if we went into books, for example, um, and the Goldilocks story, you can see the images are slightly more colourful, slightly more interesting if you're doing a story and you want really nice images to uh, put the symbolised text in underneath. Again, works in exactly the same way. I can left click, pick up the image, drop it where I want it to be. If I want to have my word, again, I have to write that in first then I can go and pick up the image and drop that in. So widget media is well worth exploring. Um, there are some really nice things that you can use in the people section, some really nice ones for world children that you could uh, add in to your resources. 
in the number section, you've got clocks. So you've got every 15 minutes. You've got some nice fractions. So we can put some fractions in and you've got some good money examples. So again, very quick and easy to make those resources. In the patterns and borders, you have uh, borders. So you can put in borders around your uh, resources, either within the cells or within a free form one that we'll have a look at later. But you can add in those borders, which again are useful things to know about. So that's your widget media. And we go back home to put the image library back there. So I think that's everything I want to talk about in terms of grids and templates. So if we go back to file, that will effectively take us back to the home page. Templates we've had a look at. You can also create from scratch. So you can create from new on the left hand menu bar or the blank document within the templates. Both do exactly the same thing. Double click, opens up a blank document. Now, as I mentioned before, this is a desktop publishing program. So I do need to set up frames before I can actually do anything. And my frames are the icons on the top left. So we have what we called uh, free, free flow frames. Styled means you've got a border around the outside. Clear means um, you've got a dotted line, which doesn't then print. And obviously you've got different speech bubbles there that can be used as well. We'll pop in a styled frame. I can put it anywhere I want on the page and drag it to the size. But what happens with this, it's different to the frames on the templates because now this frame will grow with the text that I type in. The template frames are fixed. These ones grow. Um, I'm just going to make the increase the size of your of the text and symbol so you can see it more easily. So typing in uh, a sentence, everything is uh, symbolized automatically, um, referring to our smart symbolization, which knows the difference between nouns and verbs and picks up the right symbol for the context. Should you wish to change any of those, again, you have them on the right hand side and you can just click on the one you want to change. Now, as I type, this frame is going to grow. You can see the frame is getting bigger all the time. Keep typing. Um, and when I get to the bottom of my page, I get a little red warning triangle that says I now can't put any more text on this page. I effectively overrun. What I need to do then is to create a new page which I can either do through pages, add page, or manage pages. So we'll add one. And before you actually start creating any free flow text resources, what I suggest you do is set your pages up first. So we're gonna set this one up again with a styled frame. And then I'm going to go to uh, pages, manage pages, and I'm going to duplicate that one that I've put the frame in. That means I don't have to do it each time. So I've got a few of those. Let's just move that one to the front. So now I have a series of pages already set up. 
um, my text won't automatically move on to the next page, but at least the frame is there ready for me to do it. Now you can type text, as I've just shown, you can copy and paste text. So you can go to a website. So let's go into, oh, hang on, I've got a better one open. Let's go into, um, sorry, just drag it across. There we go. Uh, the Great Fire of London, copy some text. So just control C, back into imprint three, click on my page, control V to copy, and that will copy that across. You do have to check when you copy that the symbolization makes sense and that the right symbols have been chosen and that it's not looking too cluttered which in this case I would say it is. So I would remove the symbol for in, and I can do that through the no symbol symbol. And I would remove it from here as well. And just double check everything looks okay. The other thing with symbolization, whether you're writing your own or you're copying and pasting, is that we don't recommend that you wrap text. So you can see here that we're starting a new sentence on an existing line. We suggest you start every new sentence on a new line. And also you try to keep your sentences simple. Just because you're adding symbols to a resource doesn't mean that the language can be complicated. It can obviously be a little bit more complicated than the child's used to, but it doesn't can't be overly complicated. So keeping the language simple. And we do have on our website, need to find it again, under About Symbols, Guide to Good Symbol Content. Now, this is a really useful guide, particularly the five basic rules that talk about the best way to symbolize uh, resources. So meaning, have you got the right symbol? combining text. We did this with Mrs. Grayson. This is an interesting one, particularly with um, people's pronouns being so prevalent nowadays. Pronouns are difficult for children to understand. So rather than using the symbol for he, we can reuse the symbol for Henry VIII. It makes it clearer. It makes it more sense. Keeping the language simple and keeping one sentence per line where possible. So that again, really useful. So that is on about symbols and guide to good symbol content. Let's head back to our document. You can add photos into uh, imprint three in exactly the same, sorry, into the uh, free documents in exactly the same way uh, as we did before. So I can just pick up that photograph. You can actually put the photograph in. You could put it within a cell and you could obviously put the vocabulary in too. Right. So I'm just going to come out of that one. So back to file. Close that particular resource down because I've finished with that one. I don't want to save this. And I want to open up a new document again. So back to new. Uh, this time I'm going to make a landscape document. And I'm going to show you um, some of the ways you can manipulate and create interesting type resources. So I'm going to add a header and footer to this document. So edit header and footer on the pages ribbon. That shows me where my header and footer would sit. But again, I have to put in um, a frame or a text box. So I'm going to do that through the table here. I'm just going to create a single table. Put that up here in my header space. I'm going to make that text only by going to cells, text only. And I'm going to type um, widget software limited. 
And I don't want to have a border around that either. So I'm going to go to my line color on the cells ribbon and have uh, a transparent no border. So that just sits there now as a header. I'm now going to make uh, close that header and footer. So click on header and footer and close it. I'm now going to make a frame. I put that frame on my page. And then I'm going to duplicate that so that I've got them ready already. So let's go to pages, manage pages, duplicate, and I want four of those. OK. So you can see I've got all four and you can see that the um, header has gone on to all four as well as the frame. So this one, I'm going to actually make a survey, a questionnaire. So let's go back to my formatting ribbon and just increase the size of the text a little bit. Um, and I want people to answer these questions. So I'm going to have a combination of symbol, uh, free flow text and a table. So I'm going to put my questions in a table. And to do that, I'm going to the icon here with the create a new table. The difference between flashcards and table, flashcards have uh, gaps between them so that they can be guillotined the or strimmed and the table doesn't. The flashcards are formatted to be as big as that the text and symbol can be. Um, the table ones don't, but we can alter that. So I'm going table and I want to have uh, five columns and two rows. Again, it's on my cursor. Just pop that in and resize it. Uh, now, can you see again, I've now got a, a full border around the outside, not a dotted one. So this means I'm working at table level. So on my cells ribbon, I'm going to put content fills frame. That means it puts the content, the, the text and the symbol to be as big as it can be within each of those individual cells. If I click in here now, I'll have a big one. Now I want to resize these as well. So I'm just going to put my cursor over the line and drag to resize that. Do the same with this one. Now I want to, I'm going to be pedantic. I want these to be the same size. So on my cells ribbon again, I can check. So this one has a width of 2.34. This one has a width of 2.31, not bad, but I can change that to 2.34, make them the same size. And I want to adjust the columns uh, at the far end as well. So again, just drag to resize those. Check, that's 2.51, that one's 2.39. I think I'll make the big one a bit smaller. So let's put 2.39 in there. Again, so those are now uh, level. Now, my first two columns I want to have as symbol only. So I'm going to shift and left click. And go symbol only. My middle column, I want to have text only. And my last two columns, I want to have symbol only again. So shift and left click, symbol only. So this is because I want to do something called key symbolization. So I only want to symbolize the important words in this sentence uh, or this question. So do you eat chips? So the keywords here are eat, which I'm going to just have a symbol for, and chips, which I'm just going to have a symbol for. My answers are yes. Now, I could have the nodding head, but I prefer the green tick. So I'm just going to select the green tick and uh, no. And again, I prefer the red cross for that one. To have the next question. So key here is allergic. 
and pets. And yes, and no again. Uh, just checking my allergy symbol. Do I want sneezing? Actually, if I just put allergy in the search engine, you will get different options. So I could have scratching or I could have rashes and sneezing. I think we'll go for rashes and sneezing. So we're going to replace that one in there. I may want to leave the border around that or I may want to prefer uh, remove that. So again, I can but right click to select my table, go for line color, no line color. And that gives me those questions there in a different format. So again, this freedom to be able to manipulate and create your own resources. We've also got uh, lines, which are useful for obviously label diagrams or just drawing generally. So we'll have a quick look at one of those. So I'm going to put in just a cell in the middle here. Move it into the middle. There we go. The, the lines uh, show me where the middle is. I'm going to make this one a symbol only cell as well. And I'm going to put in a blue tit for this one. So pop that one in there. Uh, so I'm going to make a label diagram. So again, I need a frame. So just make one of those. Right click, copy, right click, paste, right click, paste right click, paste, so I can pop those in wherever I want them to be. And then as I say, I have my lines. So I can draw a line from this cell to the tail, and then my line ribbon pops up and I can end my line with an arrow. We can do another one from here to the beak. And again, I can put an arrow at the end of that line. So as you can see, Imprint 3 is very versatile. Obviously, I can save that uh, and then print it out. I'm just going to head back now to File, show you the last couple of bits. Resource packs. So you have a number of resource packs that come with your Imprint 3 subscription, depending on the tier that you have. But again, it's worth having a look at those. Uh, lots of resources for the curriculum that are really, really useful. And you can just automatically go into any of those, open up the books uh, to get differentiated resources. And then there are activities that go alongside those as well. Uh, back to my file ribbon again. And I'm just going to go um, into uh, templates once more. Now, depending on the tier that you have, you may well have, if you're standard tier or above, uh, presentation. So presentation export. This is a special feature for um, the larger accounts, and it will allow you to create PowerPoints that can be exported and then played within PowerPoint that make uh, your symbolized resources interactive. There is a separate video on how to create presentations uh, through the presentation export function. So uh, please click on that to have a look. Thank you for listening.